But um, I, I just, I'm not on the bandwagon for Kamala Harris. I'm sorry. I, I just, I think it's ridiculous. Um, there's other, uh, you can vote for Jill Stein. You can uh, vote for Claudia De La Cruz. I wish they would all come together, but I, I'm not going to vote for Kamala Harris. I, uh, I think she's just going to do the same thing. Yeah, it's going to be a woman president. Well, yeah, a woman's going to be dropping bombs on Gaza. So I, I, I just don't agree with that. Yeah, Andre, you know, and, and just to add, you know, as far as uh, you're not only a woman president, but, you know, a black president. So, Andre, what do you say? Man, you know, my friend, she lives in Fort Worth. Um, she, she don't like Joe Biden. She's one of those, JB. She said she don't like Joe Biden, but she said she's going to vote for Kamala Harris. I'm like, what? I'm like, she's going to do the same stuff um, Joe Biden done. But only different is she just a different skin tone. So I'm just saying, like, you know, voting for Kamala Harris is just just another <laughs> just another stone in the duopoly. Um, another Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good to have you guys on here. Welcome for the first time. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I'm on it, man. All right. Great, great. One of the reasons, uh, one of the first things that come to mind is, of course, Andre, you go by your name, Andre. But my comrade, my sister from another mister, what is the origin of the name Tired Peasant? Well, um, before, like, uh, when I logged on to Twitter in 2020, it used to be Angel in Distress. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But um, Tired Peasant, I don't know. It's just I've always felt like a tired peasant at work, uh, mistreated with the workers. Um, instead of us getting raises, we get, like, cheap pizza parties, um, never any appreciation. So, like, I just started naming myself Tired Peasant because I'm mm. just tired of it. <laughs> and that's where it originated. Probably just from work. Understood. Understood. Okay. Now, now, one of the first things I want to ask is, you know, I always like to ask people their evolution. How did they come to be where they are right now? So as far as I'll be starting with you, Andre, I would like to ask you your evolution. Like, where are you now as far as... Uh, ideology, economic ideology, uh, political ideology, uh, and how did you get here to your belief system? Where, how did you get there? Um, okay, um, back in 2016, I used to be a hardcore Democrat. Um, I supported okay. Hillary Clinton. Um, I, I, I was on Facebook then. I used to you know, tell people to vote for her, I'm with her. And then um, mm. really, in 2019, my just one day I saw somebody post on Twitter talking about Bernie Sanders. I'm like, who is this Bernie Sanders guy? Mm. And, and you know, I, I went on his website and I seen what his um, policies were, his policy proposals, and I was very amazed. Like I never heard that before. So, yeah. you know, uh, and then I went from supporting Hillary Clinton in 2016 to now supporting Bernie. And then, you know, in 2020, um, I thought Bernie was going to drop out and become independent. Then I got, you know, I got disappointed. Then I said, like, shoot, man. Then, then he supported Joe Biden. That really made me upset. So um, now, as of now, you know, I said, I'm done with the duopoly. Um, you know, I'm trying to study Marxism, Lenin, Leninist, and all that stuff. And that's, that's my background. Gotcha, gotcha. Tired peasant, what, we, what, what happened with you? Uh, well, I come from a line of Democrats. Um, I uh, I was always a Democrat for like the longest time. Um, I voted for Obama. Um, then I like I noticed like after the Obama presidency, like nothing was changing. All this hope and change was fake. Um, nothing happened in my family's lives. Not not real change and stuff like that. Um, just things just started getting worse, like in work. And um, mm -hmm. I just didn't really care about politics until I saw Bernie's campaign. And um, that got me excited about the movement. Um, but after that happened, 
when uh, I thought also Bernie was going to be independent. And then he decided to be friends with uh, Biden and uh, endorse Biden. That's when I'm like, never again will I trust a politician. So um, just things started to get bad with that. And um, yeah, I was, I was just, I thought about, you know, being like a socialist. I was, sorry, <laughs> going through that round. And then um, I originate better with like socialist communists. So as far as your ideology, you would identify Ty as, so, as socialist? More as a communist. Okay. Um, but, but I was a Democrat for the longest time. Um, but no change will happen in my life. So uh, things started to get worse. Um, so are you telling me that Democrats are not synonymous with communism? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. What about you, Andre? Uh, yeah, I'm with on top head on that one. Uh, uh, yeah. so you burn capitalism with fire. Yes, sir. Yes. It hasn't <laughs> helped your lives at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down uh, with that. <laughs> uh, of course. Um, as far as like, uh, what was the what was the push? What was the the shove that got you into this this world that I seem to be suffering under right now, which is called independent media? Why did you jump? Why did you put, subject yourself to this? <laughs> um, I'm tired. I was just tired of like the same old crap at CNN, MSN, Fox News, just saying the same old shit. This, oops, sorry, <laughs> the same old lies. Um, <laughs> and I don't know. I just wanted. We wanted to have a, a network that is like a voice for the voiceless, like regular people, not politicians, like regular stories, regular lives of mm -hmm. our struggle. Yeah. yeah. Your perspective, Andre? Yeah, same. Um, you know, I just, me and her, we decided to, hey, we both, you know, she's, she got a big account, you know, I'm got a growing account. So I like, yeah. let's just come together and form a, a network. Um, which is now the ATP network. And, you know, ATP. like she says, it's the voice for the voiceless. So we, like on Tea Time, we invite um, com commies on Twitter to talk about their stories and struggle and stuff like that. So Yeah, we basically invite um, just your regular average person um, and they they get a hold of the show and we just talk about anything. Just chill, talk, you know, Tea Time. Just a regular That's person, cool. talk about their struggles or anything. That's very cathartic, to be honest, because, I mean, you give people a space to really just let their hair down and say what they what their issues are with the system. And it gives people the space to be able to say, oh, my gosh, I'm not going crazy. This person actually feels the way I feel. And I exactly. think that's really important, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we need we need more of that for sure. It's a way of building community digitally, right? Yes. It, 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 it's, yeah. It's kind of hard when you're on Twitter and you're reading things that other people say, but then you don't get a more of a warmer type of interaction. Like, yeah. it, it, you know, technically you and I, Tyre Peasant, are in the same city. I <laughs> know, <laughs> we have to get together. Yeah, so um, well, we, we actually have a, ch a chance because we're actually doing an action on Sunday. Uh, if you have the time and the bandwidth to come out, then I'm just inviting you. You don't have to answer right now, but. You know you're invited but it, it's it's a warmer type of uh, of interaction being able to be you know in front of people and seeing their face hearing the inflection of their voice and so i think part of uh, of being the ideology that we are is that we focus more on community that's in the root word of communist right mm -hmm. and so i think that you know, you're trying to push more community, and I just want to, you know, applaud you guys for that. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, uh, one of my other questions that I wanted to have is, how can I? I, I want to be con hell. <laughs> up here. Twitter is a cesspool. Okay. Yeah. I agree. And <laughs> it, we all know this. And you have some people on the left that 
are more habitually online than others. Yeah. What is one of the ways in which you feel, and I'll start with you, Andre, is that the left can actually coalesce and do better in building class solidarity? Um, one thing, um, JB, is, is that um, we should all just take time to listen to each other. Like, we, we know we all have different, you know, opinions and stuff like yeah. that. And I think the problem is with Twitter, in particularly for me, um, is that um, people like if like if somebody tweets something like it sounds controversial and then people are just so quick to say, you anti-Semitic or you this, you're that. And I'm like, just hear them out. You know, um, if, if you read the tweet again, you know, or you talk to them privately, then you might have a chance to come to a conclusion like, no, they ain't anti-Semitic. I might agree with their point, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I think we just need to just come to a, just reach to a, like a, a junction. That's what I got to say. Of course, tire peasant. Um, pretty much not to be so judgmental. There's so much infighting going on in the left. Um, we need less infighting and more people come together. Um, people are just so quick to block these days instead of just maybe privately DM DMing this person and talking about it and still like, okay, if they're definitely in the wrong, okay, yeah, part ways. But there's just so much bickering between the left and um, we need to start organizing before it's too late. That and mutual aid. Um, we need to, instead of donating to politicians, we need to donate to comrades in need. They need, we need our help, not the politicians. Yeah, that's something that I definitely observe. Uh, there are like new groups that are popping up, new organizations that are popping up. And then one person in that organization comes to the other organization and says, you're not legitimate. And then the other person comes to the other organization and say, you're not legitimate. And it's like, the question is, is that what good is it doing the movement if we're constantly bickering online versus actually getting our asses out into the street and actually providing for other people to show them that they can have a better system than what they have now. Exactly. You know, and so I, I feel like the, the best way is to, one of my you know, new favorite phrases is I can show you better than I can tell you. And I think the best way is to show others better than we can tell them of how they can have something better than what is already presented in front of them. So that's very true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this is actually a really good point. Uh, Notori Lee says it's very hard to talk to someone who's saying that you're dumb or misinformed if you don't pick up Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. Oh boy. What do you guys think about that? By the way, what do you guys think about a, a lot of the people who are, you know, and I'll start off with you, Tired Peasant, next. Uh, what do you think about the whole uh, people who were, you know, uh, anti-Biden, you know, genocide Joe, they were against genocide Joe when he was the presumptive nominee of, you know, the Democratic Party. And then people were against him for what he was funding in Gaza. But now they're switching, they're still turning and going more with I'm with her when it comes to Kamala. What's, what's your thoughts? I think that's ridiculous. You can even see in her tweet that she's going to continue the genocide. It's just like your old boss doing, and the, the old boss being the new boss. Like, it's basically the same thing. She's very pro Israel. She's, I feel like she's going to do the same thing. I think it's ridiculous. First of all, you're going to be voting for a cop first. <laughs> and, um, I, I just I don't know and I don't know if he, I don't know if you've heard the weird song that they have like coconut tree or something like on TikTok like Kamala's like weird like remix song I don't know if you heard that but no it's, it's just thank God yeah, yeah. It, it, it's green rot <laughs> but um, I I just I'm not on the bandwagon for Kamala Harris I'm sorry I I just I think it's ridiculous um, there's other uh, you can vote for Jill Stein. You can uh, vote for Claudia De La Cruz. I wish they would all come together, but I I'm not going to vote for Kamala Harris. I uh, I think she's just going to do the same thing. Yeah, mm. it's going to be a woman president. Well, yeah, a woman's going to be dropping bombs on Gaza. So I I, I just don't agree mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, Andre, you know, and, and just to add, 
you know, as far as uh, you not only a woman president, but, you know, a black president. So, Andre, what do you say? Man, you know, my friend, she lives in Fort Worth. Um, she, she don't like Joe Biden. She's one of those, JB. She said she don't like Joe Biden, but she said she's going to vote for Kamala Harris. I'm like, what? I'm like, she going to do the same stuff um, Joe Biden done. But only different is she just a different skin tone. So I'm just saying, like, you know, voting for Kamala Harris is just just another <laughs> just another stone in the duopoly. Um, another. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's when I look at somebody like Kamala Harris, I just see more of the same is just uh, that more of the same is a different gender. And yeah. maybe just a, a, a few shades, you know, darker, more melanin abundant. But what it good is, uh, you know, exploitation and terrorism. If that terrorism is more melanin abundant, it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? It, it just doesn't yeah. make any sense. You know, um, that's why you know I was telling people that you really don't get much of anything different with the Kamala Harris versus a uh, uh, Joe Biden. You know, uh, right. so. Okay. That, Sorry, go ahead. It's the same thing, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one, one of the things I also wanted to ask you guys about is your perspective about, you were talking about coalescing, right? Um, if you could have a conversation with Claudia De La Cruz, Dr. Cornell West, Dr. Joel Stein, uh, I'll include Jasmine Sherman in there. Those who are running independent and third party on the left, what would you tell them? You want to go, Andre? Um, yeah, um, I'll tell them um, y'all need to come together and just form one ticket um, because, you know, when you three, like, well, I mean, three or four people running separately, mm -hmm it's dividing the vote, it's splitting the vote. So by y'all running together, if you hit 5%, then you get federal funding, then um, the third party can, that third party can build up more and more. Then we could get the truth out to the misinformed and the uninformed, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I would tell them. Exactly, like a, a collective force of all of them coming together. Um, they all have like strong traits. Um, they just need to come together, maybe, Maybe we'll win that way. Yeah, uh, I, I find it. It kind of makes me sad that there's feels like there's a bit of a a, a very uh, a fault, you know, a fault line between people like Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Joe Stein. Uh, Dr. Cornell West even alluding to Joe Stein being racist. That you know that. Yeah really just uh it, it makes me sad because you know there there was there was you know camaraderie there there was love there and so you know i i'm of the i'm of the opinion that electoral policy is a very small piece but even in that small piece you're hoping that people coalesce together you know and right. so I don't know. It's just it feels kind of um, it feels disheartening, you know, to see. But you know, ultimately, like this, just strengthens my resolve to focus on the goal of actually organizing outside of the system in order to push for change. Because you know, we all know that ultimately, you know, I view electoral politics as a means to push the ideas not necessarily it's going to be the end goal or the, the the end all be all it's just a vehicle it's a means to an end in my view so you know that's how that's what it looks like to me what do you say you go ahead time first. No, you can go first sorry okay yeah you're right um yeah we gotta quote yeah we gotta leave electoralism um the end goal um yeah we you know, just it's too much at stake. Um, as we see, um, we live in a dystopian world, man. Climate change. Um, just, yeah, we're running out of time. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like electoralism shouldn't be done at all? Or do you feel like it's a small part? Or do you feel it should play a bigger role? I'll say electoralism should play a part, not a big part, but a part in local politics, like your city, okay. your state. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't think yeah. we should have electoral politics. It's just a politics. It's my opinion. Like, I think everyone should just vote for who they're going to vote for. And that's it. Like, have like a real election, like, instead of that. What do you mean by how, how oh, about uh, like, um, no, like, you know how they have, like, the electoral um, votes and stuff? I think they should just do away with that and just get, like, the popular vote. Something yeah. like that. Just, like, the, yeah. just do the popular vote. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Electoral College is really an apparatus that was created to give more power to smaller states so that the more populous states don't have all the power. Oh. But the problem is that it's it was geared more towards uh, the state so that uh, slaveholders really ultimately would have, you know, equal power over the larger states. But, you know, the, the apparatus of electoral college really doesn't truly get the will of the people and the will of the people really should be the ones that 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 win and if you just did it by pure uh if you did it just by pure population versus it, then you know the most popular people win and ultimately to be honest with you if you got rid of the electoral college uh, republicans would never win again yeah that's true um, yeah, you sure. know and yeah. then on top of it uh if we voted like direct democracy, uh, I can see things actually able to put it on like a citizen ballot initiative or something like that. You know, like a national ballot initiative, I think something like that could actually pass because I mean, what is it? Uh, over 80% of Democrats and at least 51, 52% of Republicans actually want a single payer healthcare system, and you know it's still over fifty percent for independents. So really, an overwhelming majority of the United States actually wants a healthcare system where everyone actually has equal and equitable healthcare for all. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's one of the things that I actually look at as well, but. Uh, just another uh, question for you, as far as, you know, the, the system itself, what type of changes do you think need to be made? And let me rephrase. What do you see as the most victorious course for us, especially in the Western left, as opposed, because we see it happening, you know, in the global south, especially. What do you see as the most uh, effective way for us to push for this change uh, for the left? Because I know you guys said that we just kind of have to stop getting in each other's way and start coalescing. But what does that more specifically look like in your view? Start off with Andre. Uh, I think one way is, like you um, said earlier, um, I think um, electoralism, the, if that's the end goal, then that's not right. I think the real end goal is getting out in the streets, um, coming mm -hmm. together with your community, um, educating your community, because, you know, the government is not going to save us. Uh, we All we got, we all we need, as my coach used to say. So, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what I got to say. Yeah. Um, right, like organize within your community um try to like educate people uh speak your truth um there's also community online like um just try to get everyone together we need organization we're not really organized um i think if we're organized that could like get the revolution started um but we're not we're not ready at all we don't have organization there's like too much infighting i think we need to start you know organize within your community um and also in the online world, um, just we need to organize. 
what would you say to the person who is, uh, you know, they're, they're working a uh, second shift. They have kids that they have to take care of, but they have a parent that they have to take care of. And so they're just exhausted throughout the week. I get it. And it's like, well, yeah. how do we organize if I don't even have the bandwidth to do it? What do you say to that person? Like for, for instance, like a general strike, like uh, it's not going to work unless, you know, the people that are like working those two to three jobs that they're so tired with like their kids and stuff like that. Um, that's why we need to like have like a big mutual aid thing with like some sort of general strike. Mm -hmm. um, I could tell the person that's really tired, like anything, like anything helps anything that you can do or say to um, just spread your truth to the community. Um, you don't have to like, uh, like if you work a lot, you don't necessarily have to go out in the streets, but you can just uh, get with someone in your community, um, see what you guys can figure out. Um, but definitely, I think mutual aid has a lot to do with like a general strike. We need that in order to help the people that are working to actually get out on the streets with us. Mm. Andre? Um, I tell that person, I say, um, I know you're tired. I know you got kids. Um, obviously, I know you ain't got the energy to go out in the streets to um, organize. But what you can do is um, when you get a chance, um, um, just organize online, like talk to your your family member or talk to your friends. Just tell them, you know, that we need to come together. Stop with all this, you know, um, you know, bickering and stuff because it, it's not it's not going to go nowhere like that. So, yeah, that's pretty I'm much telling. pretty much everyone has a place. Yeah, you just got to find out what your place is. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Yeah, and that's uh, that's something that I also advocate for too, and I think that is absolutely necessary for us. You know, and there's many different ways in which organizing can look. You know, there's many different uh, styles it can take. You know, and one of the things I I always defer to is what Kwame Ture said about organization. All the great revolutionaries that we've ever had belong to our organization. So either you create one or you join one, but either way, organizing is really the best thing possible. So I thank you guys for that. And, you know, I really appreciate you know, your input on that and also telling us how you have evolved in this space. So it's deeply appreciated. Thank you. No problem, man. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.